Father, we thank you for this wondrous day that you have given us just to be in your presence, to enjoy your glorious presence this morning, O oh Lord. We do not take it for granted that you have gathered us here this day because you never gather your people in vain, O oh Lord. Let that which you have planned for us this morning may it prevail. Father, I pray that you may silence all the voices of the enemy May you silence all the voices of doubt, O oh Lord, and let your spirit speak. Father, I present myself before you and the rest of us who showed up this morning, O oh Lord. May that be our show of faith, the fact that we came, and that you will not send us away empty-handed. And it's all for the glory of your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and believe. Amen. Let us have our seats. Praise the Lord. Ah, it's not cold, is it? See, it's warm. Why do we look like we've not taken tea? Yeah, it is right to praise the Lord. For those who are new, my name is Julius Karanja Nyutu. And I love Jesus as my Lord and Savior. This morning, I'm delighted in him. And I know that it is by grace that I can stand before you this morning. I want to thank God for the far that he has brought me and my family and where he is taking us. I also want to thank the vicar of this parish for this opportunity. Praise the Lord. You will say many of, that, of those, so please get used to that. Yeah? Today, uh, uh, just like the word that was read for us this morning, uh, the message that I have this morning is the path of deliverance. The path of? The path of deliverance. And it was, we were, the message was read from Genesis chapter 3 and Mark chapter 5 verse 1 to 3. And we see God doing great in the line of deliverance. So what exactly is deliverance? What exactly is, is deliverance? When, who requires to be delivered? God sent Moses to deliver his children. That is the house of Israel. That is to deliver them from bondage because they had been in bondage for so many years and now God was saying enough is enough and he was sending Moses to go and deliver we also see Jesus when he went to the other side of the lake there was a man who had lived among the tombs for so many years and we see Christ delivering this person in our lives, there are so many things that we need deliverance from. The devil has a way of holding us hostage. The devil has a way of uh, putting us into a place of bondage, binding us with chains that we can, we can almost never break. And every day we need to be delivered. One of the most powerful prayers that we always say is that deliver us from, from evil. Because the devil is in the business of binding us with evil. That is his business. And there's not a time that he will change. But the good news this morning is that God is in the business of, of deliverance. One as you fear. And how exactly do you know that you, you need deliverance? How do you know that the devil has, is holding you captive? We see this man... There are lessons that we draw from his life before he was delivered. And number one, the devil surrounds you with death. He surrounds you with death. This man lived among the tombs. He could have lived anywhere else. But the devil, his manifestation, the first manifestation of the enemy is death. And that is why when it's so easy for you to say, then you know the kind of person that lives inside of because that is his manifestation. 
It's so easy for you to say, Wewe nitaku. That is what comes into your mind. And when the devil is holding you captive, there, are, there is a tendency. The dreams that you have, the thoughts that you have, are surrounded by death. That is the manifestation of the enemy. Number two, you're bound. This man was bound by chains. This man was bound by, and every time he was bound, he could break them off. But still, he never left his area of bondage. I don't know what the devil has held us captive for over the years. But we know when we are surrounded by death, when we are bound. And number three, the third manifestation is violence. This man was very, very violent. We, we, we have this uh, debate whether uh, drinking is, is right or bad. And I will not get, enter into that debate. But if your drinking leads you to violence, then you know it is from the enemy. Every time you drink, unakuwa kama simba. Huh? You know the kind of person that is holding you captive. Violence is the third. And number four is self-harm. Self-harm. The things that the devil binds us with, they lead to self-harm. This man was always cutting himself and harming himself. What, what are the things that we do in the name of fun, in the name of having fun, but they do more harm to us than good. That is the fourth manifestation of the enemy. So if you're experiencing these things, God is ready to deliver you this day. And the path, what is the path of deliverance? When I'm speaking about deliverance this morning, I don't want to dwell on what we have seen on the TV these days, where people are told to receive and receive deliverance in an instant. I want us to focus on deliverance. I'm not saying that is wrong, but I'm, I want us to focus on deliverance as a process, as opposed to an event that just happens and that is it. As a, as a process. We learn... From the children of Israel, from the house of Israel, there are so many lessons that we can draw the, by the time that they were in Egypt. And now we can embrace as the deliverance as a, as a process. Because it took a process for them to be completely delivered. And what are the lessons that we can draw from this deliverance that the Lord did with a mighty hand upon the house of Israel. Number one, the first step of deliverance, the first, very first step of deliverance is realizing that we have the problem. When we see how the devil has manifested in our lives through violence, through death, through self-harm, through being bound, and these are things that manifest even in our, in our families. In our families. I know a family in, uh, in my village. And all the girls in that family, they were so smart. But every time they get to class 8, lazima apate, and that is the end of the education, and that is it, despite being so smart. So there is that limit that the devil surrounds us with, that we cannot go beyond a certain level because the devil has placed a limit. And every time you try to go beyond that limit, there is war. Hmm? Every time you try to go beyond that limit, there is, there is war. The children of Israel, they were surrounded by the Red Sea. The Egyptians were behind them, and the slave drivers. And ahead of them was there. They could not go beyond the Red Sea. They didn't even know that they... I don't know what was going on in their minds. Because for 400 years, they were not home. For 400 years, they lived in a land that was not their own. Because sometimes, 
The devil binds us with this. We think it's bliss. And it is bliss until it begins to harm us. That thing that the devil has bound us in. It is bliss. Smoking is bliss. Smoking is bliss. Drinking is bliss. Immorality is bliss. Until until now the slave drivers cause so much harm. So the first step is to realize that we have a problem. And the first thing that we need to do is to cry to the Lord. Is to cry to the, to the Lord. So I don't know how much you've cried. Cry even more. And the successful stories of deliverance in the Bible, we see people crying to the Lord. And the first thing that the, that the Lord told Moses is, is that I have heard their I have heard their Have you cried enough? No, you have not cried enough. Until deliverance crab comes. Cry even cry even more. Jabez was born in pain. His mother bore him in pain. And he, she experienced so much pain that he gave him the name pain. And his life was surrounded by pain. Every, every time, everything about him was about pain. And sometimes we can identify with that, right? Ukitoka kwa hii pain, unaingia kwa pain ingi? Ingine. And the, what the Bible says, Jabez cried to the, to the Lord. Because if you want to get the attention of the Lord, then cry to him. But Myers, even when he was around, well, sometimes I, I ask myself, what had Bert Myers gone to do when everybody else had gone to see Jesus? What had Bert Myers, I think he was a beggar or something, right? So him, he had other, but when his opportunity came, and he knew that there was somebody who could deliver him. What did he do? He cried. So, have, have we cried to the Lord? Number two, another lesson that we, we draw from this deliverance is that the Lord introduces himself. He told Moses, that go and tell them that I am has sent you. So this, for this deliverance to be complete, it was important that the people who were being delivered know exactly where their deliverance was, was coming from. He introduced himself. I don't know how, who you're dealing with in your attempt for deliverance. And this message came, in, came to me when uh, I was sharing with, uh, with someone and she was telling me the things that she was going through. And in my mind, I could only see how much the devil alikome mfunga. Alikome mfunga and there was no way out. All she was saying is that uh, nilienda, nikitembea, nikaguza kibanda, nikategwa, nikaguza kibanda. Na hiyo kibanda ilikuwa ya mtu kutoka uko eastern. You know the things that the devil binds you in. Huh? Ilikuwa ya mtu kutoka huko eastern. And immediately mkono yangu nilisikia kitu. Nikaenda kwa huyu pasta. Akanipatia mafuta. Nikaenda kwa huyu akaniombea juzi nimeambiwa kwa nilikuwa nasikia kufunga masikio nimeambiliwa prophet mwingine you know and in all that there was no mention of Christ in all these people that she went to deal with there was no mention of of Christ kulikuwa tu na mafuta kulikuwa tu na handkerchief kulikuwa tu na prophet kulikuwa tu na apostles who are you dealing with in your deliverance it's important that you know where your deliverance is Coming from Bonas, if you praise the Lord. Where is your deliverance coming from? Who are you dealing with? There are so many power brokers, even in the kingdom of God. Huh? I know for you to go to the president these days, you have to go through so many power brokers. And I'm not saying that the, that the Lord has not given grace to people to lead people. 
And even at this time, he was appointing Moses to go and deliver. There are people who have been anointed by God and they do amazing things in the, deliver in the deliverance. But even Moses made it known to the children of Israel that your deliverance is coming from who? And what is his name? I am. I am who? I am. God introduces himself. If in your attempt to have this deliverance, to come out from bondage, to come out from this pain, to come out from this addiction, to come out from whatever it is, then you need to know where your deliverance is coming from. And you know, this man who had lived among the tombs, and probably he had heard about Jesus, but even his knowledge about Jesus was, was limited. But what did he call Jesus? While everybody was calling Jesus the son of Joseph the carpenter, while everybody was, was uh, seeing Jesus as a man who gave them bread, what did he call Jesus? Jesus, the son of the living, of the most high God. Because he knew where his deliverance was, was coming from. Do you know where your deliverance is coming from? And I know it's not easy. Because we want to be told the things that are easy for us. We want to be told to tithe. That's very easy to tithe. Because it's only taking a calculator and doing 10%. It's very easy to raise up your handkerchief. Hmm? It's very easy to come for anointing with very solemn voices. You know, I don't know who said that we must so that you know that the Spirit is in you. Because those are the easy things too. But do you exactly know Ule Mtu Nakunji Asura? Do we exactly know him? Have we invested our time in knowing exactly what we need to do? And his power that lives in us. Don't ask if you We need to know. Because God freely introduces himself and is ready to share his identity with us. God is absolutely holy. God has absolute holiness. You know, when you read Leviticus, you see unclean things. Making clean things become unclean. If you're clean and you're walking and you touch an unclean thing, that unclean thing had preeminence over, over you because you became unclean. But God is the only one who is clean and holy, who is not made unclean by our uncleanliness. Don't ask if you, eh? I don't know whether we are following. He's the one that infects us with his holiness. But it's not the other way around. God has absolute holiness. And the faster we appreciate that, the faster is our path to deliverance. One as you fear. Praise the Lord. Number three, I want to move very quickly, is after Moses had been sent now to the children of Israel, we see them now being delivered and crossing over boundaries. So there are boundaries to cross. There are boundaries to cross. After deliverance, there are boundaries to, to cross. We need to understand that we have been delivered and we have left the Egyptians behind. The Lord said, I mean, Moses told the, the, the children of Israel that the Egyptians you're seeing today, tomorrow you shall see them no more. And that is the word of the Lord. We need to cross over because God has made a way. Then we need to cross over. And when you look at much later, the Lord comes and tells them, when you're choosing your kings, make sure you choose a king who will never lead you down the path to, to Egypt. Because God does not like people who go back to the path of, of bondage. We must realize, we must now be ready to cross over and begin now a new life. That's why I said we need to embrace a deliverance as a process. And once we've been delivered, the first thing that God does is to give us instructions. Is to give us, this is the way to go. So are we keen on following those instructions? All the way to the land promised. They went to the wilderness and God 
came down in a mighty way and gave them the laws to follow. And even in this time that God was sending Moses, there is one instruction that he gave, that you shall go and deliver them, and you shall come back and worship me in this mountain. Because there are specific instructions on worship. There is one time that my son told me some, something that caught me very off guard. We were seeing uh, a video of uh, when, when uh, Elijah called up he fire from heaven and it came and uh, devoured his, uh, his, his sacrifice. And my son said something that was really interesting. I think I've never thought about it. That people want to worship God the way they want. The way they want. You know, the easy things. The easy things. If you tell people to jump for the Lord, they will jump for the Lord. Gonna see fear. But God gives instructions on the way he should be. And the first instruction is in truth and in and in spirit. Gonna see fear. Go and deliver them. They shall come and worship me in this, in this mountain. How are we ready to follow the instructions of God? Once we have crossed over, then we must embrace the movement to there to total deliverance. Because there are two boundaries that we need to cross. First is the initial deliverance. Being delivered from the things that bound us. The chains must be broken. The Egyptians we are seeing today, tomorrow we shall see them no more. And now we are given instructions on the things that we need to do. Then River Jordan lies ahead as we now cross over as finished products. Because God, Christ said, he is ready to present us as faultless before the throne of the Father. Until there is a time, there becomes a time that we are faultless, we are justified before God. And this justification, we must understand, it's not the things that we can easily do. Nowadays, we even have a register. Is it Nithambi? Is it Siyodhambi? The things that you can easily do. But if you look at the life of Christ, I can say 90% of his ministry of, on earth was to make the people know who he was. People came, they were looking at him, you know, there were those people who were always following him. Is he going to work on a, on a weekend? Is he going to work on a Sabbath? And when they find his disciples working, they run to him. Hey, you lie to us. Why are, your why are your disciples working on a Sabbath? You're breaking the law. Then Jesus says, I am the Lord of the, of the Sabbath. I am the light of the world. I have been sent by God. Praise the Lord. Deliverance will come. Once we cross the boundaries, we appreciate God to give us the instructions. And then we must know him for who he is. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what the devil has manifested or rather bound you in your life over the years. This is the day of salvation. This is the day. And there is the first step that we said. The first step is to cry to the Lord. Cry to the Lord. Get his attention. I remember there was a time I was going to I was and there was no way out for me. And I remember I went to, to a place in Limuru uh, to pray. But I couldn't pray because I thought, I think I went with a very bad attitude. I, I was asking God, why? Why? What have I done? And there was so much bitterness in me. I just found myself crying and crying and crying. and I never said a prayer. I just cried and cried and cried and cried. Until I fell asleep. But Limuru can be cold. Eh? So Niliamshu na nabaridi. Sometimes jioni nika chukua gari yangu nika 
nikarudi and god indeed answered that cry bwana asifiwe god answered that cry how much have you cried cry even more cry for your children cried said do not cry for me but cry for yourselves and your cry to the lord get his attention deliverance is coming bwana asifiwe then we must invest in knowing him knowing where our deliverance is coming from we must be ready to cross over and never go go back bwana asifiwe i want us to pray maybe rise up i want us to have the confidence to present something before the lord to cry to the lord raise up your voices and cry to the lord he will we will have his attention this morning and he will send he will kick start the process of deliverance this day the egyptians you see today tomorrow you shall see them no more when i see fear our praise and worship simipite moko ozi
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we present ourselves before you this morning. Father, we have cried unto you so many years. We have raised our voices unto you, O Lord. And now we will not get tired, O dear Heavenly Master, until we have your attention, O Lord. Until it concerns you just like it concerned you when you sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel, O Lord. Father, we present our pain unto you, O Lord. We present our addictions unto you, dear Heavenly Master. We present, O oh God, the, the limits that we have been placed by the enemy that we cannot go over, O oh God. May you wake away in the wilderness, O oh dear Heavenly Master. May you give life to that which has been dead, O oh Lord. Father God, I pray that you may send a helper this day, O oh dear Heavenly Master. Father God, I pray that you may introduce yourself to you, to our heart, O oh God, so that we may know you even more, so that we may appreciate your power, O oh God, and know where our deliverance shall come from, O oh dear Heavenly Master. Father, I speak total deliverance for us this morning, O oh Lord. 